Chapter One of Among the Pond People. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Rebecca Braunert Plunkett. Among the Pond People by Clara Dillingham Pearson. The Biggest Frog awakens the biggest frog stretched the four toes of his right forefoot then he stretched the four toes of his left forefoot then he stretched the five toes of his right hind foot and last of all he stretched the four toes of his left hind foot then he stretched all seventeen toes at once he should have had eighteen toes to stretch like his friends and neighbors but something had happened to the eighteenth one a great many years before none of the pond people knew what had happened to it but something had and when the tadpoles teased him to tell them what he only stared at them with his great eyes and said my children that story is too sad to tell after the biggest frog had stretched all his toes he stretched his legs and twitched his lips. He poked his head out of the mud a very, very little way and saw a minnow swimming past. Good day, said he. Is it time to get up? Time, exclaimed the minnow, looking at him with her mouth open. I should say it was. Why, the watercress is growing. Now everyone who lives in a pond knows that when the watercress begins to grow, it is time for all the winter sleepers to awaken. The biggest frog crawled out of the mud and poked this way and that all around the spot where he had spent the cold weather. Wake up, he said. Wake up. Wake up. The water grew dark and cloudy because he kicked up so much mud, but when it began to clear again, he saw the heads of his friends peeping up everywhere out of that part of the pond bottom. Seven of them had huddled close to him all winter. Come out, he cried. The spring is here, and it is no time for frogs to be asleep. Asleep? No, indeed, exclaimed his sister, an elderly and hard-working frog, as she swam to the shore and crawled out on it. She ate every bit of food that she found on the way, for neither she nor any of the others had taken a mouthful since the fall before. The younger frogs followed through the warmer, shallow water until they were partly out of it. There is always the biggest frog in every pond. All the young frogs thought how fine it would be to become the biggest frog of even a very small puddle, for then they could tell the others what to do. Now they looked at their leader and each said to himself, Perhaps some day I shall begin the concert. The biggest frog found a comfortable place and sat down. He towed in with his eight front toes, as well-bred frogs do, and all his friends towed in with their eight front toes. He towed out with his nine back toes, and all his friends towed out with their ten back toes. One young yellow-brown frog said, How I wish I did not have that bothersome fifth toe on my left hind foot. It is so in the way. Besides, there is such a style about having one's hind feet different. He spoke just loud enough for the biggest frog to hear. Anyone would know from this remark that he was young and foolish, for when people are wise, they know that the most beautiful feet and ears and bodies are just the way that they were first made to be. Now the biggest frog swallowed a great deal of air, filled the sacks on each side of his neck with it, opened his big mouth, and sang croakily. Frogs, 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 frogs. And all the others sang, frogs, 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 as long as he. The gulls heard it, and the muskrats heard it, and all were happy because spring had come. A beautiful young green-brown frog, who had never felt grown up until now, 
tried to sing with the others but she had not a strong voice and was glad enough to stop and visit with the biggest frog sister don't you wish we could sing as loudly as they can said she no answered the biggest frog sister i would rather sit on the bank and think about my spring work work first you know and pleasure afterward oh said the green brown frog then you don't want to sing until your work is done you may be very sure i don't want to sing then answered the older frog i am too tired besides after the eggs are laid there is no reason for wanting to sing why not asked the green brown frog i don't see what difference that makes that said the older frog wisely is because you are young and have never laid eggs the great time for singing is before the eggs are laid there is some singing afterward but that is only because people expect it of us and not because we have the same wish to sing after she had said all this which was a great deal for a frog to say at once she shut her big mouth and slid her eyelids over her eyes there was another question which the green brown frog wanted very much to ask but she had good manners and knew it was impolite to speak to any frog whose eyes were not open so she closed her own eyes and tried to think what the answer would be when she opened them again the biggest frog sister had hopped away and in her place sat the yellow brown frog the same handsome young fellow who had found one of his toes in the way it quite startled her to find him sitting so close to her and she couldn't think of anything to say so she just looked at him with her great beautiful eyes and toed in a little more with her front feet that made him look at them and see how pretty they were although of course this was not the reason why she had moved them the yellow brown frog hopped a little nearer and sang as loudly as he could frogs 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 then she knew that he was singing just for her and she was exceedingly happy she swallowed air very fast because she seemed to be out of breath from thinking what she should answer she had wanted to ask the biggest frog's sister what she should say if anyone sang to her alone she knew that if she wanted to get away from him all she had to do was to give a great jump and splash into the water she didn't want to go away yet she made believe that she did for she hopped a little farther from him he knew she was only pretending though for she hadn't hopped more than the length of a grass blade so he followed her and kept on singing because she knew that she must say something she just opened her mouth and sang the first words that she could think of and what she sang was eggs 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 as it happened this was exactly what she should have sung so he knew that she liked him they stayed together for a long long time and he sang a great deal and very loudly and she sang a little and very softly after a while she remembered that she was now a fully grown frog and had spring work to do and she said to him i really must lay some eggs i am going into the water then i will go too said he and they gave two great leaps and came down with two great splashes the green brown frog had laid eggs for four days and the yellow brown frog stayed with her all that time and took care of the eggs after she laid them they were covered with a sort of green jelly which made them stick to each other as they floated in little heaps on the water the frogs thought that a good thing for then when the tadpoles hatched each would have playmates near one day after the eggs were all laid and were growing finely for frogs eggs grow until the tadpoles are ready to eat their way out the green brown frog sat alone on the bank of the pond and the biggest frog's sister came to her she had a queer smile around the corners of her mouth frogs have excellent mouths for smiling but it takes a very broad smile to go way across so when they smile a little it is only at the corners 
how are your eggs growing she asked oh answered the green brown frog sadly i can't tell which ones they are that's just like a young frog said the biggest frog sister is there any reason why you should know which ones they are it isn't as though you were a bird and had to keep them warm or as though you were a mink and had to feed your children the sun will hatch them and they'll feed themselves all they need i think said the green brown frog that my eggs were a little better than the rest yes croaked the biggest frog sister every frog thinks that and i wanted to have my own tadpoles to look after sighed the green brown frog why asked the biggest frog sister can't you take any comfort with a tadpole unless you laid the egg from which he was hatched i never know one of my own eggs a day after it is laid there is such a lot floating around that they are sure to get mixed but i just make the best of it how asked the green brown frog looking a little more cheerful oh i swim around and look at all the eggs and whenever i see any tadpoles moving in them i think those may be mine as they are hatched i help anyone who needs it poor sort of frog it would be who couldn't like other people's tadpoles i believe i'll do that way said the green brown frog and then she added what a comfort it will be if any of them are cross or rude to think i'm glad i don't know that they are mine yes said the biggest frog sister i often tell my brother that i pity people who have to bring up their own children it is much pleasanter to let them grow up as they do and then adopt the best ones do you know i have almost decided that you are my daughter my brother said this morning that he thought you looked like me End of chapter one